We can talk about the shoeys. Yeah. If you'd like, the floor is yeah, yours. This dude. is, I think, quite a um, a controversial sort of part of Australian live music. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I mean, listen, do what you want. We're all adults. I'm just not drinking a shot of alcohol out of a shoe. Should be simple as that. It's not, it's not <laughs> what I came here for. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to about these upcoming Australian shows? To be honest, I, I think my favorite aspect of the live shows that I've been exploring recently is I get to like be funny. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that with all of like the heavy, you know, nature of my music that, that can sometimes get missed. So it's, it's nice to come and like do bad stand up between yeah. <laughs> songs. It's pretty, I like it. Could that be a possible next career move, a stand up album? Oh man, I don't know. Dude. <laughs> I don't know. I want to ask about the new record in a little bit, Wadia. It's a beautiful album. Thank but before you. we get into it with Doris, your debut album, you're celebrating 10 years of it. Something that really grabbed my attention that I've been thinking a little about is the opener of Burgundy and essentially the sentiment of people wanting to hear your rap, no one caring about how you feel. Is that a sentiment that you still feel with people approaching your music? Maybe. I don't know. It might be like super meta now. You know what I mean? Because I've spoken about it on the music. So now there's music about that. Yeah. And then people like that music <laughs> that's about. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it can be pretty fucked. The snake's eating its own tail. Definitely. <laughs> I want to ask about this song in particular. It's named after a baseball commentator. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of baseball references throughout the song. But mm -hmm. also there are so many sporting references in your music. Are you a big sports fan? Yeah, I have noticed that. I have a lot of goddamn sports references, <laughs> like in and out. That's yeah. Um, but that song in particular, uh, I think called it that just because he was the he's a Dodgers commentator. You know what I mean? So it was like L.A. Yeah. My favorite thing on that song is actually the Dewey Cox bars. Yeah. Now I kind of looked into that. It's from a. John C. Riley movie. movie? It's from a John C. Riley movie that's yeah. a spoof about the uh, Johnny Cash movie. Yeah. It's really good. And it's someone who's been uh, have halved. <laughs> I've been halved. The, the technical term. Yeah, he's like, I'm the Dewey. I've been halved. Dewey! Me! I'm, I'm, I'm halved! Do you kind of like incorporating those? In, incorporating those references and then people can seek out those like you're almost putting recommendations into the music absolutely yeah absolutely um arts and culture is and and it's and even like academia and shit, shit is entirely uh referential yeah you know what i mean uh, referential to your life your experience your movies you've seen you know what i mean songs you've heard colors you like I want to ask about the referential nature of your music, particularly sampling. The, um, I mean, it's across, especially this new record with The Alchemist. How do you listen to music? How do I listen to music? Are you making playlists, hitting shuffle? I just made my first playlist the other day. Really? I was staunchly against playlists. Why is that? Uh, uh, albums. They, they threaten the album, bro. And the album is like, it's an institution. Yeah. Were you ever making sort of like mixtapes as a kid, burning it onto CDs? That for sort of sure, for yeah. sure. But those were like weird mixtapes. And I think like when you would come and interact with an art, when I was little, you'd come and interact with an artist. It's like, let me get this body of work by them. And then you can kind of like grow with it. Because mm -hmm. always my get an album and then I go through the ones that I like the most. Mm. And then you start learning the album based on the one that comes before the one you like, the one that comes after the one you like, and you might hate those <laughs> songs initially, but then through repetition of like listening to this album, now you start to at least become like familiar, you start to acquire the taste. Yeah. So even if it's not your favorite thing, you're still endeavoring to understand this person's complete idea. Yeah, so the playlist kind of, I guess, takes away that level of understanding, takes away that context, is that sort of... There's, How are you feeling? There's less work. It's mm. all it's all a highlight reel. It's all your favorite song from hand picked from each of your favorite which there's a, a lot of use. I had to make a playlist cuz I'm in the gym. <laughs> What's so on the gym like, playlist? Do you listen to your own music? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not at the gym. Sometimes I'll listen to a demo. So 
actually I would be, and then I was like, I can't just be in the notes app. <laughs> yeah. Like, just I gotta focus up here. You're on the treadmill, just sort of. <laughs> yeah. It's just, oh, Rearranging, editing. This is ridiculous. So yeah, what made what made it onto this first playlist? I mean, what an honor for these artists. It's like Young Thug, mm-hmm. Polo Perks, Four Fifty Four, Nolan B. Rolling, some Surf Gang, some Future. Do you hit shuffle on it, or oh, is it like, like a curated? Yeah, we hit shuffle on that boy. <laughs> We're letting it go. This is like the coolest thing I've done for myself recently. Yeah. Earl Sweatshirt, get there for the music. Still some more shows in Australia. Thank you so much for coming through, Triple J. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.